Welcome students to lesson 24 of the Natural Hazards topic. In this lesson, quite possibly the most important of them all, I will demonstrate the reasons why climate change is so concerning, the impacts that it's having today and that it will have in the future. This matters and you will see through this lesson that there are ways that it affects not just the environment but also people now and in the future. Please write the date, title and learning objective and have a pen and paper ready to learn. Time to review prior learning. Write 1 to 10, answer the questions from memory and then mark your answers. Game time. 1. The greenhouse effect. 2. Ice cores. 3. Infrared. 4. 21 centimeters. 5. Thermal expansion. 6. Orbital eccentricity. 7. Axis. 8. Sulfur dioxide. 9. Cooling. 10. Destructive. Give yourselves a mark out of 10. If you got 8 or more, you've really understood these questions. Well done. To introduce this lesson, I'll show you some pictures and tell you a brief story about them so that you can understand the ideas of this lesson. This lady is a cocoa farmer in the West African country of Ghana. She and her family have been growing cocoa beans for the last 50 years, and it's quite a productive form of agriculture. The cocoa harvests are successful each year, and she's made a good income compared to other farmers across Western Africa. Her cocoa often ends up in chocolate bars like galaxy bars that we all know and love. She's had enough money to send her kids to school and enough money to get vaccines and basic health care. However, in the last 10 years or so, she and her parents before her have noticed a change, a change in the rains and the precipitation patterns in West Africa. And because of these changing patterns, especially the reduced rainfall in spring, the crop yields of this farmer's cocoa beans have decreased over time. And that has meant that her income has fallen. Not only that, because she's able to produce less cocoa, there is less cocoa being sent to Europe to be manufactured into chocolate. And consequently, prices of chocolate around the world have increased and will continue to do so until chocolate becomes almost a luxury item for the rich. This is the story of climate change and how it affects not just people in LICs, but also people in HICs. Not just the environment, but also the economy of countries, how much money is made from jobs. And, as you can see, it's not just going to affect people or the environment in the future, but it's doing so right now. So in this lesson, you're going to understand the answers to two important questions. Number one, what human effects is climate change having? And number two, what environmental effects is climate change having? Let's go. Consider these questions before we move on write some ideas down so that you can think about them as we move through the lesson. Please write the subtitle and underline it. So I'm going to show you three types of effect to help you understand the full spectrum of what climate change is doing to people and the environment around the world. Let's start with social effects. These are effects on people and their health or their education and their happiness. They're not to do with money directly, or to do with the natural environment directly, but to do with people and their lives. Social effects. This is Lila Wati. She is a lady of 32 years old, living in a village in near Kathmandu in Nepal, a country just north of India and just south of China. It is a country located in the Himalayan mountains and it is at very high altitude. Mount Everest is in Nepal the highest point in the world. Lilawati, a few years ago, noticed that she had a fever, a high temperature. She was sweating and her joints were feeling weak. She went to bed one day and she 
was awoken in the morning by people with torches in her eyes and a tube on her mouth helping her to breathe. She had no idea what happened, but she was being transported to hospital. Her husband told her that she had not woken up or been responsive, that she'd had very high fever and was sweating in the middle of the night. Doctors ran some tests and discovered that she had a condition called dengue fever. Dengue fever was astonishing to the doctors. It couldn't possibly have been that. Because dengue fever is spread by a mosquito. And mosquitoes in the past have not been able to survive at the high altitude temperatures of Nepal. The cold kills mosquitoes and previously no one had ever got dengue fever. Lilawati was one of the early ones to get this disease. A disease that causes death without treatment very often. And it happens in Nepal now very frequently. Where in the year 2000, zero people per year were getting dengue fever. Now in 2020, some 14,000 people are diagnosed with it every year. And here's why. These two maps show temperatures around the world. In particular, the spread of diseases, infectious diseases spread by mosquitoes around the world. In A, it shows the spread of diseases caused by mosquitoes in the year 2005 and in B 2025 a projection you can see from this map here the red where there is a high frequency of diseases spread by mosquitoes that it's mostly affecting equatorial regions of the world those that are near the equator that are hot and humid already Amazon rainforest Congo in Central Africa southern parts of India Bangladesh and Indonesia However, fast forward, and you see that the red areas have spread through to Nepal here, and Saudi Arabia, and more to Madagascar, and further north even to the United States of America. Infectious diseases spread by mosquitoes are spreading further around the world because the temperatures are rising, allowing mosquitoes to survive. And this is causing illnesses like malaria and dengue fever, which affected Lilawati in Nepal here, to affect more people. And so more people are dying from these conditions. This is a direct cause of climate change in the rising temperatures around the world. Previously in Nepal, the high altitudes would have prevented mosquitoes from thriving. But even at higher altitudes, temperatures are rising. And so insects like mosquitoes, which spread diseases like dengue fever, are growing in number and location around the world. That's the first problem. It's a social effect. It's the spread of infectious diseases caused by climate change. But it's not only that. Our economies are being affected as well. The amount of money that countries have and the amount of jobs that people have. These economic effects. Principally, agriculture is the first victim when it comes to economic effects of climate change. This is Ohene, spelt O-H-E-N-E. He is a farmer in Ghana of cocoa as well. And his family and he used to and continue to be important farmers in rural Ghana, producing significant amounts of cocoa that is exported to Europe every year. His income is relatively high compared to the average Ghanaian. However, in the last few years he's noticed this. Crops are dying because of change in precipitation patterns. There isn't enough rainfall in many parts of Ghana anymore to sustain, which means allow the growth of, cocos. And consequently, crop yields are decreasing. The amount of cocoa that he's been able to grow is decreasing. This isn't just affecting cocoa, but also crops like maize, corn, and coffee in particular, the most grown crop in the world. This map shows the impact on agriculture of climate change. Colours that are yellow towards red will have reduced crop yields from climate change. Colours that are light green to dark green will have increased crop yields from climate change. And this is mainly the result of change in precipitation patterns. Areas that are greener will get more rainfall due to higher evaporation. And areas that are redder will get less rainfall. It turns out that in Africa and Southern Asia, a large proportion of the economy 
and the income of people comes from the primary sector, from agriculture, coffee and cocoa beans, for example. And consequently, their economies, for example, of Ghana and Nigeria and other countries within Africa, will be disproportionately affected by climate change, which means more than the economies of HICs, such as in Europe, because of a re reduction in crop yields from farming. So a significant economic effect of climate change as a result of changing precipitation patterns, less rainfall and more irregular rainfall, is that agriculture will be harmed. And since agriculture is so important, often employing 60% of people in LICs, the economies of these countries will be badly affected and there'll be less money to spend on schools, on hospitals and on infrastructure and so lives will be made worse, and the development of these countries will be slowed down. So climate change, as you can see, doesn't just affect people's health directly, but also it affects the amount of money that people make, and it's happening right now. But it isn't just human beings that are being affected by climate change, it's also the natural environment. One effect is habitat loss. This map shows the meeting point between Russia and the United States of America, Alaska, a place called the Bering Strait here. These pink dots show the places where this animal, the walrus, lives. And walruses typically live in areas that are very cold and have lots of ice. That's their favorite habitat. Unfortunately, due to climate change, the ice in the northern hemisphere, particularly high latitudes near the North Pole, are melting very rapidly. And so the amount of habitat available for animals like walruses is decreasing. And so the walruses are being packed into smaller and smaller spaces. And very often those spaces near the sea level are not enough. And so they climb up cliffs like this. However, walruses are not adapted to climbing. And so they don't understand what it means to fall because they've never been high up on top of rocky outcrops like this. And so because of habitat loss, walruses are pushed to desperate and unusual locations like this. And when they have to climb down from a cliff face like this, they don't know how, and so they fall. And thousands upon thousands of walruses die every year because of habitat loss, because there's less ice and there's less land available to rest to breed, and also they die from falling off cliff faces like this. It's not just walruses that are affected by habitat loss, it's many species all around the world, such as the famous polar bear and the penguins of Antarctica. But this particular example is quite emotionally affecting, and it shows clearly the impact of climate change on habitats of species near the North and South Poles. Not only habitat loss, however. Coral bleaching is another significant effect of climate change, and it's happening under the seas. As the climate gets warmer, as temperatures rise, and as CO2 in the atmosphere increases, the oceans absorb more carbon dioxide. And as the oceans absorb carbon dioxide, they become more acidic. Because when carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, just like in sparkling water, in a bottle of fancy sparkling water that you might get in a restaurant, the carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the water changes the taste of the water. As you'll know, sparkling water has a different taste to still water, and that's because it is slightly acidic. Here is coral. Coral is made up of the skeletons of a tiny animal called a polyp. Polyp spelled P-O-L-Y-P. And these animals, these polyps, make these huge structures called coral reefs, which thousands of species of fish and other animals use as habitats. They're some of the most biodiverse places in the world. The Great Barrier Reef is called the Biodiversity Hotspot. It has an enormous number of species of plants and animals living there. However, here's what's happening. As more CO2 is absorbed by the oceans, the acidity of the oceans increases. CO2 turns into an acid called carbonic acid when it's dissolved in water. 
and here's why that is a problem. Coral is healthy because algae, a tiny plant, attaches itself to the structure of the coral. And the algae, in a positive relationship with the coral, provides food for the coral. And so the coral survives by working together with the algae. The algae get a habitat that they can latch onto, and the coral get food. However, when the ocean becomes more acidic, the algae release from the coral. They can no longer hold on to the coral when the ocean becomes more acidic. And so the coral becomes bleached like this. Coral gets its color from the algae that latch onto it. Not only that, when coral becomes bleached, the coral starts to starve because there's no longer algae providing food to the coral. And when the coral starve, eventually they may die. And you lead to this situation here. And dead coral can no longer provide habitat or food for the plants and animals that live there. And so the biodiversity decreases rapidly in coral reefs. Coral bleaching is now known to affect almost 90% of corals around the world. And it's happening because carbon dioxide levels are rising in the atmosphere, a direct result of human emissions of CO2. This is happening now, and it will get worse in the future as CO2 levels in the atmosphere rise. Time to assess learning. Write one to eight and answer the questions from memory. Number one, energy production. Two, acidification. It's called ocean acidification when CO2 is absorbed by the oceans and becomes carbonic acid, and so the ocean gets more acidic. And this causes coral bleaching. Three, dengue fever, because insects like mosquitoes carry disease. Three, 45 gigatons per year. Five, more powerful because of warmer water. Six, methane, infrared. Seven, 96,000 years, orbital eccentricity. And eight, global warming. Give yourselves a mark out of 13. If you got 11 or more, you've really mastered these questions. Repeatedly test yourself on this set of questions to help memorize them. Time to embed learning. Answer the questions from memory and use the keywords in your answers. You need to use every single keyword to get perfect marks. Go for it. So number one, the social effect. You should have explained something like this. Number two, economic effect. Something like this. Make sure you've used every keyword, underline and tick every time you've used one of the keywords. If not, add in green pen where you've missed them. From this lesson, write two questions. Answer them from memory and then in a week's time, collect all your questions and test yourselves on them repeatedly until you've memorized them. Thank you for joining me this lesson. In the final two lessons on climate change, we're going to explore what we can do about climate change. Firstly, how we can survive it, and secondly, how we can prevent it. Join me then.